Well, good afternoon, everybody. It's a chilly afternoon here in Oklahoma, and today we are going to do the inaugural oil change, our 2020 RAV4, doing it a little bit ahead of the actual scheduled maintenance. So we hope you'll join us and take a look at what's involved and what we find out as we do the first change on this RAV4. Hope you'll join us. go over just a couple of real simple preliminaries before we get started on this particular change. Uh, I've done a few oil change videos and if you follow them I'll link some videos to them on a 2013 Corolla, the old 08 Sienna, uh, an ES350, Lexus ES350 and the uh, Ford Ranger. So oil changes are not a complicated thing but this is the first time we've done it on this 2020 RAV4. Now the scheduled maintenance interval for these guys for the first oil change is 5,000 miles. Uh, I don't believe in waiting that long particularly for a brand new engine. Uh, this uh, four-cylinder uh, four engine is being put under a lot of work and after we've gone through the break-in period, which I think most Toyota folks will tell you is about a thousand miles, uh, it's a good time to get the oil changed. Now, I, I, I have not done it at exactly a thousand. The car just turned over 2,800 miles, so it's kind of a happy medium. Uh, there is a Toyota Car Care channel that I've started watching and he advocates doing your break-in oil changes right after a thousand miles. And he pretty much echoes the same sentiments I believe that these four-cylinder engines do a lot more work, they're torqued a lot higher, and they take this thinner 0W16 oil. And it's worthwhile to go ahead and do the, to baby these engines as much as you can and an early oil change certainly isn't going to do any harm. Now, those of you who have seen my other videos know that in general I'm a fan of the uh, SuperTech oil. It's made by the Williams Oil Company, sold as their private label brand through Walmart uh, under the name SuperTech. And I was perfectly happy with the idea of getting some of the 0W16 oil. And as I did a little checking, SuperTech had a 0W16 for a while back in early 2019. But apparently, best I can tell, uh, due to some licensing and certification standards changes that happened mid-2020, not sure exactly when, SuperTech withdrew its 0W16 from the market. You can't get it anymore. Now, from what I've been able to read, and I can't say that I found anything authoritative, it wasn't so much a matter of the oil not making the standard. It was that Williams Oil didn't choose to pay the fee necessary to put it through the test to get the certification such that they can make sure that it claims everything they say it claims. So, uh, again, I don't know that that's fact. That's what I've read. And one way or the other, it's not available in, in SuperTech. 0W16 is not available in SuperTech. Now, what I did find, in fact, 0W16 around here in Oklahoma is a little difficult to find. I had more trouble finding it than I expected. So, I have gone to what I think is probably the next best choice, and that's just good old-fashioned Mobile One uh, 0W16 5-quart jug. And it also calls out that it's specifically formulated for Honda and Toyota engines. So, I think we're in good chase there. I've never heard anybody really knock Mobile One. Have the official uh, Toyota filter. This is the uh, uh, 90915-YZZ F2 filter. I believe, actually, this has been superseded by a newer oil filter number, but this is still readily available. I found it online through some suppliers for a pack of five for five bucks a piece. Uh, I got this one at Walmart for about $6.97, a little bit too much, but I've got it. And one other departure for my other practice in oil changes, and all the oil changes I've done years before I ever became a full-time, well not full-time, but a, a DIYer, uh, I changed my oil, pulled out the drain plug, changed the oil, and called it good. Never known about or cared that in some cases, some drain plugs have crush washers or crush gaskets. In this particular case, the 2020 RAV4 does in fact have, a, they call it a drain plug gasket. It's uh, still technically, I think, operates as a crush washer. And in this case, I am going to use it as a crush washer. I'm going to replace it. And again, it goes back to the fact that the 0W16 oil in this thing is super thin. I mean, it's like water. And uh, whereas a thicker oil with a crush washer that was mostly metal, it was exclusively metal, I wasn't too concerned about reusing it. Read plenty of places online where people had not replaced them and had not encountered any trouble. I've decided that due to the way this crush washer is made, it's kind of hard to see in the film, but this is not just a piece of metal. There is a, 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 a layer of material on the outside. Then there is a sandwich of metal followed by another layer of, of 
plastic or polycarbonate, some sort of, uh, of, of non-metal material. And that all persuades me to believe that it's probably a good idea to follow the uh, Toyota instructions and replace this crush washer when you do the oil change. So we're going to replace it. The uh, part number for the crush washer is 90430-12031. As shown in the receipt from my local parts dealer. All right, so we've got the basics in place. We're doing the Mobile One Zero W16. We've got the official Toyota filter. We've got the crush washers. So all that's left now is to get the oil changed. We've got the uh, got the Rav4 on some ramps. These are uh, some new ramps. These are not the Harbor. These are not the. Uh, Rhino ramps that I did another video on that failed on me. I did not replace those. Uh, these ramps are rated for uh, a ton each, and that should be the the uh, the front end of this thing uh, weighs about 2,700. So that should be well under the capacity of these ramps. These are solid steel ramps. I've got the wheels chalked, and I've got the electronic parking brake set. So all that's left is to go ahead and get the oil changed. So let's get started. Okay, we are now underneath the. RAV4 and the first thing you'll notice about this car first car I've had that has all of this stuff covered up in protective plastic covers and in particular this area right here is a protective area where the oil drain pan the oil plug and I'm sure the oil filter is there are one two three four ten millimeter bolts that hold that in place so we're going to loosen those and it appears at least that there is a design for this to kind of hinge right here and flop open this way so we'll see if we can get that loose and set it open i don't have my smaller tripod here and i'm doing this on my own so we'll go ahead and get these loose So much for the hinge, it all falls away. Okay, now that we have the cover off, just give you a good bird's eye view here. There is our oil filter, right where we can get to it. And it is not that embedded canister type with the uh, drain plug, and the drain hole, and the uh, drain tube. It's just a regular spin-on filter. Hallelujah. I hate those other filters that I see on the other Toyotas that, I, that I've worked on in my family. And up here is just your regular old-fashioned drain plug with this drain with the drain plug gasket. They don't call it a crush washer. So I think all that's left is to get our uh, get our washer and open that puppy up and get her drained. So let's get after it. Now, if I remember my Toyota sizes correctly, that drain plug should be the dreaded 14 millimeters. So let's see if I remember right. And I do. Ha ha. Yay rah. So, let's see how brutally tight they put this on at the factory. Oh, hardly tight at all. Beautiful. So, we're going to try. I've got a drain mat down here. It was just wrench tight. And it didn't need any more than that so we're going to we're going to try to avoid spilling we get we sometimes get a little bit of spillage even with my little protective mat i'm going to get a little piece of cardboard to go behind my my drain a bucket here to protect it against any splash so we're tearing off a little piece of splash guard throw away sacrificial cardboard just in case we need it. Minor oversight is that I 
did not get any gloves. We have, uh, we have been, this is a Saturday afternoon I'm doing this video, and we spent most of the early part of the afternoon on, a, on an extended drive in and around town. Nothing too crazy, but the engine oil should be warm. So we're going to go ahead and see how this guy goes. Perfect. Uh, it's hard to get a good character of the oil. It is uh, a, li a little darker than I expected at only 2,500 miles, but uh, not bad. Uh, certainly has a good healthy um, motor oil smell. Certainly nothing indicating it's burnt or has been abused at all. Uh, this would also include any uh, small, the, the small natural filings and uh, machine residue that comes out when an engine is brand new like this one and the rings are being seated uh, and you're going to get some of that debris in the bottom of the oil pan. And that's another reason I just drained this out. Uh, get this changed out now to keep the thing as fresh as possible. I will undertake a 5,000 mile change interval from here on out. Uh, checking it regularly because I'm very cautious about this super thin oil and uh, we'll see how this goes. So we're going to go ahead and let this drain and we will be back shortly to take off the filter. Now, now I'm, I'm, I'm rushing just a tiny bit because I got a later start this afternoon than I intended on this and I'm running a little bit low on light. It doesn't seem that bad in the video but it's darker in reality than it is here. So what I want to do now uh, while the uh, drain pan finishes drain while the drain plan finishes draining I'm going to go ahead and grab this filter and get that loose so we will take and hopefully we will experience the same reality with the oil filter that we did with the uh, drain plug. It's not on there brutally tight. No need for it to be. Just tight enough. And we'll see if we can get this guy out. Nope. That is not the standard. Oh, no wonder. That's the wrong oil filter wrench. <sighs> we should be able to get by with an old school oil wrench. Assuming I can get this one small enough. Let's see. Will not loop around there tight enough to grab it but I did uh, take a test on my on this oil filter wrench and it will the flutes will fit on that filter I just have to get it on there Well, it didn't feel like it's fitting though. Oh, ho! Oh. We have solved the mystery. This wrench will not fit. See, so you learn something new all the time. This wrench will not fit because it is 
against a bracket on the side of the engine. Okay, I have one other possibility. Ha ha! I have an older oil filter wrench. I have an older oil filter wrench that I think I can use. That fits and it will clear the bracket on the side. Let me show you what I'm talking about here. This little, here's, here's the filter. And right here is, uh, where's my finger? Huh. Okay, right here is the flange that prevents that other oil filter wrench from loosening it. But this wrench fits right smack on. No problem. So all we've got to do there, all we do there is get the wrench on the other end. Now the reason I had kind of retired this particular tool is because the end had gotten a little uh, rubbed off and worn down. So we'll have to see if we can get this guy off. Still more adaptation. I'm concerned about the amount of clearance I have to put the bolt and the wrench and the nut all in here with this plastic trim around it. So I'm going to cheat a little bit. I'm just going to take an open end wrench, put it around the, I'm going to take an open end wrench, put it around the base of that socket and see if I can go ahead and coax that filter loose. That should work. Come on. There we go. It's coming now. There, we got it. Spinning off just as clean as you please. Okay, now, something that I, uh, I'm gonna double check. The number on this filter is 90915-1009. Now, that is different from the filter number that I have uh, listed, but I also know that there have been some changes and superseding part numbers for part filters. So I'm gonna double check that number before I put the new filter on. Okay folks, I needed to clarify a little bit of information that gets the straight scoop on the part numbers for the oil filters for the RAV4. So what we took off of the RAV4 was this guy, 25, 90, 9915-1009, okay? That's this guy right here. When I looked up the part number, it told me that I should order uh, 90915, uh, YZZF2. That's what I got down here at the local Walmart for too much money. And so I decided I would look and see if I could find a bunch of them on, Wal on uh, Amazon cheaper. Well, that's what led me to this Amazon order right here for that exact part number. But surprisingly that when that part, when that package came in, was this package. But look at what it says here. 90915YZZF2 has now been superseded by 90915YZZN1. And that what is what I got a package of five of for 25 bucks plus tax from Amazon. These are official, uh, official Toyota filters, YZZN1. This is the current part number for the RAV4 oil filter. What we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, cellophane, take the cellophane membrane off, and we'll put in a little bit of just nice, we we'll put a little bit of oil on the outside so we get a nice clean mating surface with a little bit of lubrication on there. Go ahead and spin it back on. Okay, good enough. And now we will. So. Put that on there. And the rule of thumb is I'm going to back this off counterclockwise, which takes it off until I kind of feel the first kind of a thread kind of lock in. 
there we go and now I'll gently spin it until I feel it meet hand tight and then we'll do okay that's hand tight so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do hand tight I'm going to put my wrench back on here and then we're going to go another half a turn that should be more than adequate Okay, that's about a third of a turn. Two thirds of a turn. That's good right there. All right. Now, as I mentioned before, in all the other vehicles I've ever done oil changes on, I've never changed an, uh, a, uh, a, 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 a what they call either a crush washer or a drain plug gasket, whatever term you want to use. I've never changed one out, and I have had zero problems with it. Uh, now, on as I said, on this car, because the zero W the zero W sixteen oil is so thin, and uh, this is a slightly different material. It is a sandwich of metal and some sort of a plastic carbonate combination. I'm not sure exactly what it is. It doesn't look like it would want to be crushed more than once. So we're going to take this guy and we're going to toss it. We're going to put a nice new Toyota original one procured from the local Toyota dealer. Put it on there. Good to go. And then we will put the thing back on. Put a little bit of the oil on the threads and note to self gotta get some more blue shop towels i'm out huh? we'll put this guy in here and i'm gonna go Wrong direction. Well. Just gotta make sure you put these on the right way. Snug. That's good enough. That's all it needs. Okay. Oil filter's on. Drain plug is there. Just gonna give it, yeah, one more cinch, and we're good. Now, we're gonna refill. We're now to the point where we're gonna refill the engine. When you, uh, the full capacity on this engine with, with a filter change is 4.8 quarts, so it's gonna essentially be that entire jug of Mobile One over there. So let's pop open the hood and get her changed. Okay, we are ready to refill. This, as I said, calls for 4.8 quarts with a filter. It's essentially going to take this entire jug minus a little bit. So we'll just pour it in there. That's just a smidge over 
that's about four and two thirds quarts, 4.7 quarts. We will obviously uh, check the level and make sure that it's appropriate. We haven't spilled any, we don't think we have. This is a nice clean process. Thing is, just check for leaks, check for level. Now the proper fill procedure, fill check procedure, is to let the engine run, get it up to temperature for about five minutes, turn the engine off, let it wait for five minutes, and then check the dipstick. Remove it, clean it off, put it back in fully, pull it back out, and read it. And uh, let's uh, start her up and see how she behaves. So, I'm going to go ahead and uh, let the engine run for a few minutes, get it up to temperature, and then we will do the proper oil check, and we'll consider this job done. So, we'll be back in just a moment. While we're waiting for this oil level to drain, we're going to replace this plastic beauty cover and get it put back into place. I don't know if there was a practical protection reason unique to this engine and this car that persuaded them to put that on here, but it's kind of a nuisance. One drawback to this that I can immediately see is that if you did have an oil leak, the only way you'd be able to tell, at least an oil leak through the filter or from the oil pan gasket or the drain plug or from the upper part of the engine draining down, is if you remove that cover because it would take a lot of oil to leak out to come out through the edges of this of this beauty cover. So. Uh, that's something that would concern me, and it would, it would, it would make me wonder if the uh, if I've got an oil leak, I want to know about it as soon as possible, not after it's had time to pool on that cover, and I just happen to pull it and drain it and check it. So, anyway, that's a discussion for another day. Leave me your thoughts and comments about that in the in the uh, notes below. But we'll go ahead and put this in for now. Nice and tight, we're done under it. Okay folks, it's been more than five minutes, so we've had plenty of time for it to drain back down. So, and I am incredibly pressed for time. I am almost in the dark. I'm having to use my trouble light here to help do it. So let's take this guy out. We'll wipe it down. We'll put it right back in all the way. And pull it right back out and let's check it. We are right smack in the middle. I don't think it will show up because the oil is so clear, but we are right smack between the low level. Make sure that's showing up. It won't show up on the camera, I don't think, but we are right smack in the middle of the low level and high level marks. And according to the Toyota directions on oil changes, this is too low. The low mark, ah, I'm trying to do this. The, uh, the low level mark, that's too low, but this mark right here is not full. That's too much. You want it in the middle, and that is from the Toyota specs. All 
Alrighty, folks. Now, because this is the first oil change in this RAV4, and I personally am curious as to what you're liable to see in the oil, uh, I uh, cut the uh, oil filter open. I've got the filter media right here, so uh, we're just going to take a look. We're just going to take a look to see what this looks like. Make sure this is on. Now, I, it took a little bit of doing to get this thing open. I don't have a proper uh, oil filter opening tool that I understand exists. And I, when I found out there was one and saw how much they cost, I don't know that I'll ever do this again, but out of the novelty, I just took a hacksaw and opened this. But it creates lots of sharp edges, so be very careful if you try this at home. And I'm just going to see if we uh, have any, any metal particles conspicuous in the filter medium. Um, in fact, I might cut that and see if we can get this thing even more visible. Yeah. So, I believe the filter, the oil, making sure that you can see this, the oil comes in from the center, gets pushed out, and then goes back out the, the top of the galley. So, what would be caught would be probably, most likely, in these inside filaments. So let's see what we find. And again, I have no predisposition about what we're going to find. Don't know. I'm not seeing any big shavings of oil, I mean, of metal. There might be a few very small specks of material in there. I hope you can see them in there. Thumb through the rest of this. might be a little speck. I, there might be a few tiny specks that I'm not even sure you're going to be able to discern on the camera. Maybe uh, a couple right there. Maybe one or two right there. But we're talking microscopic amounts, if that much. Just a curiosity on my part. Thought you might be interested to take a look yourself. Yeah, this looks really clean. Not that I would expect it to be uh, bad or anything, but again, the uh, settling in debris, the, the fine machining debris that happens as those rings are setting in, you might see a few metal particles in this filter. The biggest particles would be in the filter. <clears throat> but I'm not seeing very much. Now, I, I will say this. my I have read, again, conflicting reports that that a lot of the manufacturers now have, uh, they essentially do a, a bit of a break-in or a run-in on car engines when they're manufactured. I don't know if that's true. And someone, if you guys are watching and you do know for sure one way or the other, feel free to comment. Uh, and, and so some of that opportunity for some of this really fine machining debris to show up in the filter is, is uh, a lot lower. Yep. Well... I don't see anything, or what I do see is so small and so insignificant that it's of no consequence, and, and you would want that in a brand new engine. But I at least satisfied my curiosity. If that was curious to you, hope you enjoyed tearing that up and taking a look at it. Well, I'm having to use a little extra light because it is dark. It is dark. Uh, I think that wraps it up for the RAV4 oil change. Uh, Oil looked good, smelled good. As I said, I'm going to be doing a 5,000 mile interval on this. So at 2,800, I'm going to do another oil change at uh, 7,800 or six months, whichever comes first. Uh, hope you like our videos. Please, questions, comments, or criticisms, please leave them down below in the comments. Please subscribe. We are growing by about 10% a month. 
We've got over 1,100 subscribers now. Thank all of you for taking the time to subscribe. We hope you like our videos. We hope to share a little bit of information and hope you can save a little money doing some things yourself. I guess that's going to wrap it up for now. Remember, guys, if it's worth doing it all, it's worth doing yourself. Have a blessed day, everybody, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.